Hello, Secondary 2 students. Um, it's Mr. Green here from my home now. Um, haven't been going to the school too often lately because things are kind of crazy out there, right? Um, I hope you're all doing well and surviving uh, all the craziness that's going on right now. Uh, this is a crazy time for sure. And we are... Um, dealing with a lot of changes. Uh, we just found out, right, that school is not going to come back in session, um, at least in person, um, until uh, next year, uh, at least. So um, it's kind of crazy that this whole last term has just been at home um, with you learning online. And I'm sorry, it can be harder for a lot of people to have the motivation to do it when you're not at school and don't have me or your teacher nagging you there in person. Uh, but know that we are still here. We still care about you. We want the very best for you. Um, and we're still putting together stuff so that you can... Um, keep up on the things that you need to know uh, for uh, your future classes and for the rest of your life. Um, so today what we're going to be doing is starting a brand new unit, um, a volume unit. We had just finished up graphing, right? Um, and we had talked about graphing lines, parabolas, um, Let's see, what else was there? Absolute values, square roots um, were the things that we graphed there. All pretty cool stuff and hopefully uh, semi-easy to do. Um, there's maybe a few kind of tricky things to pay attention to there. I would say volume isn't too bad either. There's a few curve balls, but mostly you're just plugging things into formulas, so you should be okay. So um, essentially the idea with volume, um, I'm going to kind of do a little bit of a demonstration here. I have two lunch bags, and these are my favorite lunch bags. Um, I'm not the best at bringing lunch to school, but when I do, I bring them in these lunch bags. So this is my first one. This is my Kylo Ren lunch bag. Very, very stylish. Um, you'll notice the shape of this is kind of a weird shape. It's kind of curved um, up here and then kind of has a rectangular shape on the bottom. Um, my other uh, lunch bag is my, um, here, let's see, we can see, this is my R2D2 lunch bag. And so I have two very fun lunch bags that I bring my lunch to school. Um, if I remember to bring my lunch to school. <laughs> um, and you'll notice this one is kind of a, uh, well, it's kind of like a, a cylinder. It has a circle. And then at the top, it has like half of a, a sphere is what we call it. Um, both of these lunch bags are different shapes, right? Um, and so what we're going to be looking at in this unit is how do I find out how much like food could I fit inside my lunch bags? How much space is there inside of these? Um, which one uh, can I fit more into is kind of the questions that we're going to be looking at in this unit. And so hopefully uh, that can kind of give you an idea of the stuff that we're going to be doing here is pretty uh, useful um, because it, it really relates to the real world. And whenever we're talking about three-dimensional objects, we want to know how much space do they take up. And that's essentially what volume is. Okay, so um, I'm going to switch over here to a uh, more kind of document camera setup so that you can see as we kind of work some problems, but we'll go through 
Uh, in today's uh, lesson, we're going to talk about finding the volume of prisms, um, which are a three-dimensional shape that are quite simple. Um, triangular prisms, as well as rectangular prisms. And then we will uh, do a little bit of more complicated uh, problems, just like one example of that as well. So kind of our goals for today are for you to be able to find the volume of both triangular and rectangular prisms and um, combinations of uh, triangular and rectangular prisms together is kind of what we're going to be doing today. So you'll you'll see more kind of how those problems play out as I give you kind of an example um, and a more formal rundown of what volume means. Okay, so I will see you in, well, I will see you in my next setup. Okay, so now you can kind of see my desk so that we can kind of work on some things together here. Um, I first want to talk about, before we dive in, I really want to define this idea of volume a little bit further, okay? Informally, we talked about volume as kind of how much space something takes up, but I really want to formalize this and make sure that we understand what volume is. So, um, volume is, and I'll maybe preface it by talking about um, area first. So in this class, we, we've talked about area previously, right? Area for like a rectangle, let's say I have a rectangle here, and we'll say that this side is like two inches and this side is four inches. I don't actually know, but if I got out my ruler and measured it, we'll say this is two inches, this is four inches. Um, we wonder what is the area of this rectangle? Well, the area is just two times four, right? We multiply the two side lengths together and so we get eight is our area. Now, if these were inches, the area would have inches squared as the units, square inches, meaning, let me get another color here. We'll maybe do Christmas. Meaning that well, this side here has two one-inch pieces in it. This side here has four one-inch pieces. So in total, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One by one squares that fit into here, okay? So area is how many many one by one squares fit inside, okay? So how many can you get to, to fill in the shape, okay? Um, we did areas for circles as well, and we'll deal with them more next time for sure. Um, but this essentially is what area is. So when you're dealing with volume, okay, volume is for a three-dimensional object. So something that has, that's in 3D space. I'm going to draw just a sketch. Oh, hopefully I can, my artist skills are up to par. Okay, there's a box for us. This is what's called a rectangular prism. We have a name for it, okay? Um, volume, let's say that this is, um, we have a length here, a width here. Oh, sorry. 
length is here, width is here, and height is here. It doesn't really matter what you call length, width, and height, okay? So the volume of this rectangular prism you just get by doing the product of all three. So it's the length times the width times the height, okay? And essentially what that does is it's how many Instead of one by one squares, it's going to be one by one by one cubes fit into this shape, okay? So one by one by one, that being a cube with one inch by one inch by one inch, okay? How many one by one by one cubes fit inside? Okay, so essentially the idea between area and volume is the same. There's just an added dimension of like height to it, okay? And so um, to calculate it, for a rectangular prism, you just do the length times the width times the height, okay? So let's do an example. We've got one over here. We've got a rectangular prism here with sides of 4, 4, and then 8. So to find the volume, I just do the product of the three lengths. So this, we'll, we'll say this is our, it really doesn't matter which is length and width, to be honest, but say that's our length 4 right here. The height would be 4, and then how long it is, is 8, okay? And you'll kind of notice in this formula, the area of just this face here, this square over here, this 4 by 4 square, you can see is 4 times 4 is showing up in this formula, and then you just times by the the, the height or the length of this, of this box, okay? So to get our volume, we just do, we multiply the three sides together, okay? Now notice I don't have to multiply by these other sides, right? Because I've already covered those. I just need length times width times height, okay? So what would I get when I do this? I do, um, let's see. 16 times 8, which I assume, let's throw, maybe throw that in the calculator, but I believe you get 128. Okay, so it's going to be 128, and these were in meters, so it's going to be meters squared would be my units there, meaning there are 128 1 by 1 by 1 so one meter by one meter by one meter cubes that fit inside of this um, rectangular prism, okay? So not too bad, right? Just multiplying numbers together. Let's do one more just to make sure we got the hang of it. Here's another rectangular prism. We've got sides here, seven, seven, six, and then these sides are corresponding ones they're both seven as well, okay? We want to figure out what the volume of this box is. Well, I just do the length times the width, then times the height, okay? So my volume is going to be seven times seven times six, okay? And let's see, what do we get when we do that? 49 times 6. Um, again, I'd have to throw that in the calculator. That should be 294. Oh, and sorry, I messed up here. That should be a cube, okay? This would be also meters cubed. Because for volume, you're dealing with one by one by one, so 
1 times itself 3 times, cubing the units instead of squaring it, sorry. Square, square units are for area, okay? So we've got um, meter, 128 meters cubed on this rectangular prism, 294 meters cubed on this one, okay? So again, that isn't too bad, right? So let's look at another kind of example that pops up when we do this. Let's look at triangular prisms. Okay, so triangular prisms are shapes where you've got a triangle instead of like a rectangle you've got a triangle and then just you kind of go straight the other direction okay to get another triangle of the same side size on the other side okay so this would be a triangular prism here and we want to find the volume of these these guys okay well if you kind of notice here this, this whole thing is actually kind of half of a rectangular prism. Or another way you could think about it is to find the area of this, or sorry, the volume of this prism is if you find the area of this triangle and then times it by the height of the prism that will give you the volume, right? Because kind of like with our, our rectangular ones, here we were doing the area of this face here times how far we were stretching it over, right? That would give us the volume, okay? Again, kind of here, we did seven times seven, the top area times the and of height that we've added, okay? So area times the height will give us volumes of prisms. So essentially what I just need to do is if I find the area of this triangle, okay, I can find the area of the whole prism, okay? So I'm gonna just draw the triangle separately for a sec. So that we can work just with it. Now notice this is a right angle so that'll be a right angle. This is 4, this is 5 so this will also be 5, and then this is 3. Okay, because prisms just go straight straight across so these lengths will be the same on top and bottom here. Okay, so this is the triangle on top that we're dealing with. And if you remember, how do you find the area of a triangle? Well, the area of a triangle is one half base times the height. A, a triangle is half of a rectangle. And so you just take the base times the height will give you the area of the rectangle and it's half of that, okay? So in this case, my triangle, this is my base, this is my height, okay, how tall it is. The hypotenuse isn't one of these, right? It's how far up you go on your triangle, okay, how tall the triangle is gives you this height, okay? So I would do my area of this triangle is one half times the base, which is three, and the height, which is four, okay? So together I get 12 here times a half is six, okay? So that's the area of my triangle. And then I just times that by the height of this prism, which is two here, okay? So I do two times six, is 12 and it would be meters cubed. Okay, 
So to find volume, I'm just doing, for a triangular prism, I'm really just doing half of the formula that I did for um, rectangular prisms, okay? Okay, so let's just do one more example of that. Well, let's start. We have a triangle again that we're dealing with. It looks like it's a right triangle. Okay, from here. So this is eight yards, six yards, and then the hypotenuse there was 10. Okay, but you really only need the eight and the six, right? Because this is your base of the triangle. This is the height, how tall it is. So the area of this triangle is one half times base times height, which is, so one half times eight is four times six is 24, okay? So that's the area of this top triangle. And then we just times it by how tall this prism is, which it looks like over here is six yards, okay? So the volume, I just take that 24, times it by six, the height, okay? And let's see, what is that when we do that? Uh, 144. And these were in yards, so it would be yards cubed. Okay, so hopefully that helps finding volumes of um, triangular prisms. Okay, one last thing that I want to talk about before we're done for today is let's say that you've got some stairs and you want to find out how the volume of your stairs, okay? So let's say we got a shape like this. How are we gonna deal with something where you've got kind of a weird shape where it's not just a prism, okay? Well, you can kind of see in here, there are some prisms going on, right? There's, if you just took this chunk here and cut off this part, you would get two separate prisms, right? So that's essentially how you deal with things when you got stairs, right? You just cut them into things that you know how to do. So I'm gonna cut mine right here and I've got two separate prisms now. I've got this one right here and then this one right here, okay? and I just will find the volume of both of them and then add that volume together, okay? So let's maybe call, I'll call this one prism A, this one that's over here. What's the volume of prism A going to be? Well, it's got six here, 12 across, right? and four down. So my volume, volume of prism A is going to be, I just do four times 12 times six. That's my volume of that prism, okay? So what do we get when we do that? 48, times six, 48 times six, oh boy. Calculators are a good thing, aren't they? 48 times six. This is 288. Um, it doesn't tell me what units, but it would be units cubed, okay? So that's my, the volume of just this chunk, okay? Let's call this other one, 
B to find the volume of B what do we need to do well I can tell the height of it is 14 if I knew how thick it was here I'd be in good shape well how thick is it I know it's six thick this way right so it's got to be the same over here it's got to also be six there okay so 14 and 6 and then I just need to figure out how long it is from here to here okay now be careful you may be thinking oh it's 18 all the way across well for this prism B we just want we just want from this corner to here right we just want that length to get our third length to times by to get our volume Okay, so how do we get just that part? It's not the whole 18. Well, we know that this one is 12, right? So this part has also got to be 12, okay? Because this is just a rectangle here. So this is going to be 12. So then what will add to 12 to give you 18 total? Well, you need 6, right? 6 plus 12 is 18. Okay, so again, we got this, the length of this by taking 18 and subtracting 12 from it. Okay, so my volume of prism B is 6 times 6 and then times 14. So in other words, 36 times 14, which let's throw that in the calculator because I do not know. And I don't want you to just sit around while I figure it out. Okay, so it's 504. So when you have some stairs, what you can do is cut them in to pieces and then figure out the volumes of those pieces. Now you might have to figure out a missing length uh, based on the other lengths that it gives you, but you'll be able to find the volume. Okay. And so our total volume, our final answer here would be 288 and then I would add 504 to it and I get 792 that would be my volume for these stairs okay so I know you're just staring at this in awe. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist a pun there. Um, but essentially, that's how you find volumes of these shapes. Hopefully, that's helpful. Uh, let me know if you have questions, and good luck on the homework and on the quiz.